lovely Calimaris, this is Calimara here. Today, I'm doing a redesign that I've been wanting to do for a while. As you might have seen from the title, I am giving my own spin on the Dimitrescu daughters from Resident Evil Village. But before we get into the spooky business, I'd like to take a moment to thank this video sponsor, Alice Closet. Alice Closet is a free mobile fantasy dress-up game with Alice in Wonderland aesthetics and a lot of roleplay and story elements. In this game, you are transported to a fantasy world where people own dolls called Alices, who you can dress up and compete in Alice contests with. Kind of like Pokemon contests. And if you know me, one thing I love to do is reimagine characters, dress them up in different styles, and admire pretty art. So this game was pretty much perfect for me because it has all of those things. Arina Tanemura is the artist behind the game's visual direction and her work made me fall in love with the game as soon as I started it up. In the game, you also get to meet tons of charming characters who are all fully voice acted. If you've played Mystic Messenger before, you'll also enjoy this game because the characters will occasionally hit you up or send you text messages and I really enjoy these hot people calling me because nobody ever calls me in real life aside from my mom. There are tons of outfits, hair, and accessories for you to try, and if you want to download the game, you can click the link in my description to let them know that I sent you. And now, on with the video! One thing that has always been a cornerstone of Resident Evil games are its memorable villains, be it Mr. X, Nemesis, Albert Wesker, or the various tyrants that appear in the games. The newest additions to the mainline games have definitely not disappointed. I personally really love that they're expanding to other western horror monsters like vampires, werewolves, and not just zombies all the time, and I think they tied it into the lores and laws of Resident Evil really well. Of course, your first thought when I say Resident Evil is probably gonna be Alcina Dimitrescu and her castle. And in my opinion, a lot of it has to do with her design and characterization that is a unique take on the vampire trope and survival game villains. You don't usually think of elegant, eloquent, well-dressed noble women strutting around with dignity and class when you're playing a survival horror game. At least, not to run away from them. I am aware that there is some controversy around Lady D's character design and whether or not it was plagiarized, but I think that's probably a whole video on its own. Comment down below if you would like to see a video about the big booba lady herself. And you're probably wondering, why the daughters? Why not go straight for the lady herself? Well, aside from whether Alcina's design was original or not, you immediately recognize her when she appears. The daughters, in the meanwhile, I have a lot of trouble trying to tell apart. Even when they're all up in my face, and by my face, I mean the face of whatever Let's Player I happen to be watching, I'm like, wait, which one is this? Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about or who these women I'm drawing are, they're basically the adopted daughters of Lady Dimitrescu, inspired by the Brides of Dracula, who effectively function as mini-bosses at the Dimitrescu castle level of the game. Maybe it's because I'm not a hardcore enough gamer to tell them apart immediately upon first glance, even if I know they wear different necklaces and have different hair color, but do you honestly think I'm going to see what pretty accessory they're wearing when they're trying to bite my face off? No! I swear there have been moments in the game where I was thinking, are they using the same model three times? I'm pretty sure they're supposed to have different hair colors, at least. Of course, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe Capcom was purposefully going for the matching twinsies thing, or they're trying to be cost effective in their assets. And in the end, it really didn't take away from the experience of the game. I just think that there was a missed opportunity there to show off the girls' individual personalities because they are far from blank slates. And I love giving characters makeovers, so I thought this would be fun. So, as I've mentioned, one thing that has always helped me tell the girls apart were their personalities, their unique voice lines, and how they interact with Ethan, the main character. According to the Resident Evil wiki, Bella is the oldest daughter, 
noted to be quiet but with a strong head on her shoulders. Cassandra was the middle child, and she was noted to be a sadist who particularly enjoyed tormenting and killing her victims. Daniela was the youngest daughter. She was noted to be the most delusional of the three. So, based on those traits, I picked out some outfits and hairstyles that I thought would best match their demeanor. I wasn't too worried about the logistics of how they would get those outfits in the first place because technically, all three of them are just a swarm of blowflies mimicking the form of a human, so they could technically form any type of dress or hairstyle they want. Now, one of my highest priorities for this redesign was making the daughters look more like nobility while still maintaining the horror element of vampiric witches. While I was doing this redesign as well, I can't help but think the swords that they gave the mob enemies at Castle Dimitrescu should have been the weapons they gave to the daughters, since I think that swords kind of feel more elegant than sickles, which are more closely associated with common folk, like farmers, especially since swords were prominently featured in their house crest. So, in this version, the girls would carry swords while the mobs would have the sickles. For Bella's makeover, I wanted to give her a sleek, mature, formal dress that is minimalistic but refined. I found references for mermaid dresses which hug the body closely and flare out at the bottom, and in particular, I really liked the dress design by W. Lop, Lop? I don't know how to pronounce that name, which incorporated these sashes that hung off from the shoulders because it really gives it an elegant touch. I wanted to keep things reserved and poised for Bella because of her being the oldest and arguably most sane among her sisters. I like the idea that the daughters represent a certain aspect of Lady Dimitrescu herself, so for Bella, I see her as taking after her elegance and matronly nature. I tried to reflect this as much as I could in her facial expression and pose with her head held high and a composed expression on her face. For her hair, I wanted her to have the tidiest hair among her sisters to fit her mature theme, and the original design already has her hair pretty much parted to the side, so I just took that and went with it. It's admittedly a pretty classical hairstyle with a half bun and neatly brushed hair, which fits the castle's aesthetic. And I'm also going to have it so that her hair is adorned with pearls later to make her look expensive. And I gave her a lace collar with black chains that connect to her shoulder pads just like the reference. And just to add some complexity to the design and to mimic the dangly necklaces that the girls wear in their original design. It also ended up looking kind of like spider legs and I thought that was a nice touch. I wanted to incorporate their house crest in the design as well because I thought it would be a nice ornament, and for Bella, I used it as the centerpiece to pretty much hold her entire dress together. In the end, she kind of gives me Morticia Adams vibes, and I love it. Also, fun thing I noticed while looking through reference images for the daughters is that Bella and Daniela are actually missing hair. If you look at their reference images, and I found a few models out there as well that show when they have their hood down, they've actually got bald areas on their heads where their hair is missing. And you can also see that in the concept art I'm using as well to reference my design. I thought it was just a stylistic choice for coloring the hair, but no, they straight up just have bald spots. I guess you could say Cassandra won the genetic lottery there. And speaking of Cassandra, for her makeover, I wanted to go with a bolder, more unconventional kind of dress. Something more risque and suggestive to fit her sadistic personality. So the dress I chose is very strappy, it has a lot of lace and areas that are see-through, and it's also the least restrictive. I've always seen Cassandra as the most active one just because of that drive to hunt for prey, so she's going to be the most aggressive and needs to be able to move freely. If Bella is Lady Dimitrescu's elegant and matronly side, then Cassandra is her terrifying, murderous side. I tried to reflect this by giving her sharper facial features like a more angular face and sharper eyes. 
I also carried the theme of sharp edges over to her fringes, but overall, I decided to put her hair in a French braid for utilitarian purposes. In my personal headcanon, Cassandra seems like she would care the least about her appearance, so I don't think she would accessorize much or do anything special with her hair like Bella. But to help her stand out, I'm going to try and put in extra detail to the lace in her dress and boy did I bite off more than I can chew with that. I also ended up giving her Lady Dimitrescu's claws so she can grab onto her prey more effectively. And I think it's a nice homage to her mother's deadly side. For her crest, I decided to use it as a belt that holds up the skirt of her dress. And the final concept kind of gives me gladiator slash warrior vibes and I'm really into that for her. Finally, we have Daniela. Because Daniela is the most delusional, I translated that in my head as airheaded daydreamer and off in her own world. And my first thoughts when trying to redesign her was Alice in Wonderland. So I knew I wanted to go for something airy and whimsical. While I was browsing through Pinterest for inspiration, I saw this poofy princess dress with layers of tulle and I knew that that was the one for Daniela. Because I wanted to keep things consistent, I also gave her thick, poofy hair to match her poofy dress and sleeves. The whole aesthetic makes her seem the least threatening, so I tried to carry that over in her facial features by giving her a rounder face and big, wide eyes. I did my best to make her expression and big eyes unnerving instead of cute, and I feel like I managed to achieve that rather well, but let me know what you guys thought. As for what part of Lady Dimitrescu Daniela represented, it's definitely her playful and effervescent side we see in the beginning when we first get captured. I think that's a really good descriptor of Daniela's theme. I wanted her to wear something in her hair and I thought what would be more whimsical than the black rose Lady Dimitrescu wears. I think that rose also matches the curls and silhouette for her hair, so I was pretty happy with that decision. And for her crest, I decided she would have it on a garter on her leg that would peek out every now and then through the slit of her dress. The final concept gives me really strong Mad Hatter slash Alice in Wonderland vibes and I really really like that. I gave all three sisters slit-like pupils to make them look more chimeric and I also added fangs to Daniela and Cassandra because they're showing off their teeth. I didn't notice this before but the crests get progressively smaller and lower from Bella to Daniela. This was completely unintentional but I kind of like it because it identifies who's the oldest, middle, and youngest. For coloring, I'm kind of stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit because if you guys have seen some of my other videos, you know that I'm very much into my pastels. I like soft, cute colors, I like pinks, so this is kind of the exact opposite of what I usually go for. But I am up for the challenge. I thought about potentially stylizing the colors to fit my aesthetic, but I also didn't want to take away from the horror slash monster design concept. So although it's pretty monotonous and I don't know if I did it well at all, I stayed true to the original with its muted, washed out colors and all black apparel. I struggled a little bit to find the right color for the skin because I wanted them to look pale and sickly, but none of the colors looked right, so I decided to go with just pure white and build grey shadows on top to give them that corpse-like pallor. One thing I definitely wanted to do as well was give them these porcelain-like cracks on their bodies to hint at the crystallized form they take after Ethan kills them, and I added these details toward the end after everything else was complete. The end result made them look a lot like marble, which I really liked, but you could also see it as necrotic blood vessels coursing with mold. To make their eyes pop, I put a bit of a darker color on their upper and lower eyelids and I decided to give them a bit of mascara running down their face as well for more of a disheveled look. And of course, I gave them really dusky lips and blood around their mouth just like the original. I tried to pick dull, washed out colors for each of their hair because I didn't want it to stand out too much against the monochrome color scheme, but I still wanted their hair to look luscious and shiny to make them really seem like noblewoman. I 
think looking back, I could have given them like stringy hair that's unkept, which makes them look terrifying and more like witches. But I don't want to go for a witch aesthetic. I want to go for rich vampire ladies, okay? <laughs> Really, the most complex part of this redesign, aside from coming up with ideas, were the dresses. I didn't have to do much in terms of color, but the details and patterning were what made it complicated, to say the least. For Bella's dress, I tried to make it seem so that her dress is made out of smooth silk, which was easy enough. And Daniela was such a sweetheart because her dress was so easy, just being layers of tulle. No, the real challenge was Cassandra's dress. The lace on that thing made me feel like I was pulling teeth and I definitely spent way more time on it than I should have because I kept trying to find shortcuts that would create the appearance of lace without actually having to draw lace because newsflash, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. I do end up fixing up the lace after in an attempt to make it look more convincing, so just bear with me, I didn't record it because it took way too much time and I know none of y'all want to see that. Also, people talk about how hard it is to draw hands, but honestly, more people need to start talking about how hard it is to draw toes. Like, I would honestly take drawing hands over toes any day because they're just like finger stubs, anatomically, they still have the same amount of joints as our fingers do, so they're literally underdeveloped fingers on our feet. And when I think about it or look at them too long, it freaks me out. So I guess you could say I have the opposite of a foot fetish. But after many hours, blood, sweat, and tears, a lot of finagling and finishing touches, this is the final result. Let me know what you guys think of my redesign in the comments below and which daughter is your favorite. I think this has been the most difficult redesign I've done so far and it's probably because I'm tackling three characters at once. So please like this video if you guys enjoyed it. I did the best I could with my arsenal of skills and tools and at the end of the day, I just wanted to create something I would be proud of. And in that aspect, I think I did a good job. Once again, I want to thank Alice Closet for sponsoring this video and making it possible for me to keep doing what I do. Please check out their game using my link in the description because it helps them out and it helps me get more sponsors in the future so I can keep doing more ridiculous things like this. If you guys want to support me as well, I have a Ko-fi account which you can donate to if you have some spare change you want to toss my way. I also have a Discord server where I post exclusive updates and sneak peeks of my latest projects, so join that if you want to be in a welcoming community of artists. Follow me on all my social media, check out my comic because that will make me really happy, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye!